Welcome back to this episode where we're building a Flutterflow YouTube search for application. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. We're going to focus our attention now on hooking up the live API that we configured in episode five. So please do check back on that video for a refresher. We're now going to bring it into our application where we can now carry out live searches across the API. And of course, we're going to see the results in the UI. So hope you're ready. Let's get cracking. So if you've been following along so far, we have been using the test endpoint, which looks like this. So we've got this configured in the API. So it's um, it's connecting to this particular URL here, which is this particular document. It's a static document. It's not live. That's what we've been using just to build out the sample of our application. Now it's time now to fo focus our attention on the rapid API that we configured in episode five. So um, of course, if you need to connect to this again, if you've not seen this website for a while, then please do check the link in the description of course that will take you straight to this particular API which you did subscribe to of course um, if you've been following along and now we're going to take this particular search and this particular URL here into our application and then we're going to also pass in these particular headers which we're going to need to do in order for us to authorize ourselves against the API and of course if everything is configured um, as if you've been following along then we should see instant results with inside our application so let's um let's now configure the URL now in our API of inside Flutterflow so we're just going to move over to Flutterflow here. Now, this is the API uh, section. So let's now move and copy what we need to. So we're going to replace the API URL here. So we've inside the Rapid API. We're just going to make sure we've got search selected here. We're just going to make sure that we just choose that URL there. So let's just copy that into Flutterflow. Let's just replace that out. And of course, we are going to need to add these headers in. So let's add a header. And the way that that is set up, with inside here, you can see we need to take these two headers in. So let's just copy that everything from X to the Y there in between the single quotes. Let's just copy that. Let's go here. Let's just drop that in there. And now we need to put a colon in. So just put a colon in there. Let's go back here and let's take the API key. Now your API key will be different to mine, of course. Let's just paste that in there. Let's add another header in. Go back here. Let's just choose this. Let's just copy that header. Let's move that in here. Put a colon. Let's go back here. Let's just get that final reference there copy that paste it in and hit save now what we're going to do we're going to quickly fire this up now into test mode so let's do that now let's just hit on the little test icon so what you're going to see now, of course, is that the application doesn't actually return anything back. And there's a there's a good reason for that. So the reason is, is that we haven't actually set up our variables in order to pass our query actually into our API. So let's do that now. So we move over back to the Flutterflow UI builder. We're just going to go back to the API calls. And then here we need to now choose our query parameters. First, we're going to create a variable, though. So what the variable will actually do for us is it will allow us to reference the variable inside our Flutterflow application, which will then pass that actually into the query of the API. So it's really, really important. And the variable that we set here will be referencing within inside the Flutterflow UI builder. So let's click Add Variable. So here we are just going to type API query. And the query is going to be a string because that's to do with the search term that we're going to pass in. And we don't need to put any default value in there. That's all we need to do with inside the query parameters. If you remember back to episode five, we talked about the um, the query that we actually need to pass into our API. And actually, if you look back at the, the documentation here, we know that it's called Q. So what we're going to do is we're going to translate the value that we're going to put in from the API query into Q. And the way you do that is by simply just going back here, add a query parameter in, and we're just going to do Q and the specific variable is going to be from a variable and we're going to choose our API query that we just created here. So you'll always create the variable first and then create the query parameter. That's all that we need to do. Just hit save. So what we can do now is we can actually test that to make sure that's working OK for us. If we just click on response and test up here, as you can see here, we, our variable name is there. But what we're going to do, we're going to pretend to pass a value into it. So all we actually need to do is put in here a value. So let's type in, let's just put in weather, for example, say test API call up here. And then in a moment, you should see the response come back. So this is no different to what we had returned previously when we're using our more static URL um, as, a, as a test. So this proves that our, our API is, is, we're connecting to our API, we're passing the right credentials as in the API key, and we know that we're getting a valid response back. 
Now we're almost ready to test our API, but we can't quite test it yet. We need to make some changes to our application now to actually use the API query variable that we just actually created. And that's done really, really easily. So we're gonna focus our attention on the home screen that's gonna carry out that initial search. So let's just go back to the UI builder. Let's, in fact, let's go to the widget tree. That's probably the best place. And then let's click on the home page. Now, if you recall, our home page will, as soon as the application loads up, we're gonna carry out the search that we need. So if inside that, just click on the actions up here. And let's click on open. Now with the, this particular section here is our back end call. This is what we created previously, but we haven't actually set anything up to pass the query in. So the way that you actually do that is um, just select unplus variable there. And then here, we're just gonna to want to choose our variable, which is our API query, which is what we just created. Just choose that. And the value that we're gonna set is actually from the application state. So this is the initial search value. So let's just choose app state. Let's go down to initial search and let's just hit close. That is all that we need to do. So now let's test this and let's see if we get the query results come back in our application. So here we are in the test mode. As you can see here, a search has carried out. Now that looks a lot better, actually getting some something that looks a little bit different that we've been seeing over the last few episodes. So we're not quite done yet. We um, need to also make some changes now to our search screen. So we're gonna to want to now be able to make a change to the search term, and then we're gonna to wanna to see the search then get carried out. At the moment, we've just got some the, the actual, the, the static text that we, we typed in earlier on to do with the search term one and search term two, I think it was. We now need to make a change. So let's move back over to the dashboard. Let's move over to the search page. So just make sure you've got search page selected. And of course, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually carry out the search here once this text gets changed. So just select the search term field that we created earlier. And of course, you remember that we did actually create some, um, some actions on this particular section. So let's just click open there. And you can see here that we've got the API backend course. We just need to do the same thing that we did just a moment ago. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the widget state we actually use the, the text within inside the text box to be our search term. So let's just select that. And um, here we want to now hit the plus variable. So hit plus variable. We want to also choose API query, which is what we had before. Choose that. Now the value is slightly different. So let's click on that little icon there. And we want to choose widget state because we want to get the text from the text field. And here you can see here it's just called search term. So just choose that. And that is all that we need to do. So just hit close. And let's just do a reload again in our application, hit instant reload. So that initial search gets carried out. Let's just hit the little search icon. Let's just choose say Flutterflow and hit enter. Now what we'll see is now, because we're not actually closing the screen down, let's just hit the X and then we'll see that we've actually got results this coming back. We've got a little bit of a UI error here, which we'll sort out shortly, but you can see here the actual search term is actually is taking place. What we need to do is we need to actually, once we've done the actual search, we actually want to close that particular window down. So we can actually do that and let's do that now. So back with inside the UI build, in fact, the widget tree, let's move over to the action flow editor here. Click on the action flow editor. Let's just scroll down. Let's press plus here to add an action in. And we just want to choose this one here, close dialogue, draw, etc. pop. Just choose that and hit close. Let's just go back to the test mode. Let's just do an instant reload. Hit the search. Let's just choose, uh, let's just type in Flutterflow once more. Hit enter. There it is, it's closed. And it has actually done the refresh actually at this particular stage. So that's pretty good. We're looking in good shape. Now we've actually got our application hooked up. So we also wanna make another change though, of course, because if you go to the search screen, uh, none of these search terms here, we wanna hit this little search icon here and we actually want that search to then carry out. So let's quickly do that now. Move back over here. Let's just click on the icon button, go back to the action, hit open. And again, we need to do the same thing up here on the API search. So let's hit add variable there. And we're just gonna choose the API query. And in the value, slightly slightly different, we just want to choose the term item because that is the, the in the list view, that's the variable that we're actually using to display those previous search terms. We know that's just a string, so that's all that we need to do, hit confirm. What we also need to do here is, uh, we've already done it previously, of course, in a step, we actually close that, that, that search screen down. So let's hit close, let's go back now to the, the test mode, let's do an instant reload. And we should just now be able to choose the search option and then we should see the search carried out. So hit search here, 
just choose uh, the flood, uh, say let's just to let's just choose flood of flow here and that will carry out the search and of course we're now seeing the results as we expect we could go back to search just to prove that actually everything is working let's just choose weather hit enter and there it is different results coming back excellent of course weather is not providing any refinements back so we're not seeing that actually seeing those but of course if we just choose here and go back to flood of flow in fact sorry just there and then we know that we're getting the refinements coming back so let's now focus on our refinements and let's actually get this also doing the same thing as well so all we've got to do is go back over to the dashboard choose home page and if you recall with inside this particular row here we previously in this container created an action as well so let's just choose the container let's move over to the action here and let's choose open and we've just got to do exactly the same thing here we're just going to hit plus variable we're going to choose API query and the value they're actually going to choose again is the refinement item so again that's just the string that we got with inside that pill just hit confirm and um, just one thing we need to do here is just make sure okay now we don't need to close anything down from the home screen here so just hit close and we should just be able to go back to the test mode here hit instant reload okay so we go up to search let's for example type in here top music hit enter we get some some results come back let's just hit top songs to 2020 and there we have it it looks like our refinements are all perfectly connected as well okay so let's um just sort the ui problem that we've got out here so you can see here that we've got this kind of error this overflow this occur and it looks like we've not got something set up here and what this typically means is that um what we're putting inside this particular row is overflowing the the, the kind of the size that we've actually got within inside the UI itself. So something is going beyond it. So let's have a look here. Let's go back to the dashboard UI. Let's just move down to, yeah, let's move down to this particular row. So the, this particular row here is the um, is the container for all of our children. Um, I can see here that it looks like we've not set it scrollable actually. So just down here on the right hand side, we've not actually made the, the, uh, the kind of the row allows to actually scroll the child elements with inside so let's just make this little adjustment let's just choose it to make sure it's scrollable and you'll find hopefully now if we move back into test mode that that problem should go away so let's just go back up to search here let's do a search for top music again and there we go we haven't got that problem in the ui now we can scroll across all of these of course and we can choose any of these hit best music and then a new search is going to take place is it going to take place okay let's try my playlist that's obviously returning about the same results. There we go. So not every time you click on these refinements, you're going to see a different set of results come back. I have found that in a couple of the samples that I've kind of done. Uh, but generally, you should see a fresh list come back. And of course, when there's no refinements, then the refinements doesn't get, um, nothing gets produced here with inside the UI. So next up with inside the UI Builder, we're now gonna make a slight change in our application now to mark the history term as a favorite. And that is done quite simply by following the following steps. So here we've got the term item. So that's the piece of text that the user is gonna hold a long sort of press down on. And um, we're then gonna fire an action. So just make sure that one's selected, move over to the actual action flow editor, hit open flow editor and what we're going to do is we're going to want to choose the on long press option here so we've done a lot of on taps but on this one it's going to be on on long press and we know that these particular actions will be carried out on a long press on the screen of the mobile device so hit add action so the first action that we're going to add is we're going to update the initial search value with the term item from within inside the list view so we're just going to choose make sure we've got that one selected and then we're going to choose um update in fact let me just go down here update app state here and we're just going to choose add field and we're going to set the initial search value as our term item so just click on initial search slate update type we're going to set the value and then inside the value we're just going to choose term item we know that the term item is just a string so that will be saved into our application state for initial search hit confirm Next up, we're going to hit the little plus again because we're going to want to show some kind of visual cue back to the user that that term has now been added as a favorite. So hit add action and then up the search here, we're just going to just do a search for snack. So show snack bar, just choose show snack bar. And then with inside here, we're going to add a combined text now because we're going to want to say this is the term that's been added as a favorite. So choose combined text and the first value is going to be in here. We're just going to choose this option here. We're going to choose the, the actual term itself. 
So choose term item, which we know is a string, hit confirm. And then the second piece of text is, we're just gonna to wanna to put a space in here and we're gonna say has been added as a favorite. That's all that we need to do, hit confirm. And then we can then simply now test that now by just going into test mode. Let's do an instant reload of our application. So let's just hit the search. Let's hold our left mouse button down here on Flutterflow and it says Flutterflow has been added as a favorite in the bottom. So that's working as we expect it to be. We can change any of these, of course, choose weather. And of course, if we now do an instant reload within our application, just test it, we should see all the weather results come back as our initial search. There we go. So there we have it. In this particular episode, we've pretty well much covered the hooking up of our live API now with inside our application. In the next one, we're gonna polish the UI a little bit more. We're gonna start introducing Lottie animations to show kind of a loading indicator to when that search takes place. There'll probably be some other little refinements along the way as well to the UI. We also then need to flesh out the actual detail page where the user can actually then select a video and then they can actually then watch the video back with some further details about the video. So um, we're not far away now from completing the series but um this has been a good step forward in terms of making the application more live i hope you've actually enjoyed it hope you've been following along and please do like the video and of course please do subscribe to the channel as well where we'll be doing so much more of this type of stuff so um, until the next one thanks for watching